Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to run God of War 2018 and we're going to be running the Windows version on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. And the method I'm going to be using is something called Crossover and if you haven't installed this already then please follow the link in the description. This is going to take you to a tutorial which is going to show you step by step how to download Crossover and then set up the Steam Bottle so that you can go ahead and activate your copy of God of War and then download it to your Mac. If you'd like to keep up with the latest M1 Mac gaming news then please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up to date. Lots of people have been trying to get God of War working through Crossover. However, we're reaching this error message. So if I press the play button here, it will go through the first time setup. But what will happen is that we'll get this error message which says that you need at least Windows 10. And this is despite the fact that I've tried running this on a Windows 10 bottle. However, this message will still come up. So the standard Steam bottle will actually install on a Windows 7 64-bit bottle. And this is still compatible with the fix that I'm gonna be showing you today. So this fix comes courtesy of developer NAS who has put together a patching guide for God of War, which will allow us to run it through crossover on the M1 Mac. You may remember that NAS has been one of the main contributors to the Mac port of RPCS3 and is very much one of the main people responsible for getting PlayStation 3 emulation working on the M1 Mac. So the main thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be patching the God of War application file so that the checks for Windows 10 and also DirectX 11 can be bypassed. This is because the EXE will do some checks on your computer and if you don't meet those hardware requirements then it's not going to let your computer run the game and therefore if we just disable these checks we're able to launch the game and get into gameplay. So the tool we're going to be using is a binary analysis tool called IDA Freeware. This is going to be a lot easier than you might think it's going to be. There's only a handful of steps involved in modifying the binary. I'm not going to be distributing the binary. That's because as soon as a new patch is released, then the exe file is going to be out of date. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is go ahead and download IDA Freeware. So I'll leave a link in the description for this website. And then we're going to go ahead and click the download button. And then we're going to select IDA Freeware for Mac ARM. So I'll click on this now. So then we're going to go to Finder and then we're going to go to our Downloads folder. I want to find IDA Freeware here and then we're going to double click. Then we're going to hold the Control key and then click on the Installer application and then click Open. And then we'll click Open again. Then we're going to press Next. I accept the agreement and then Next, Next, and then Next. Then we're going to add Desktop Shortcuts and press Finish. And then we're going to double click on IDE Freeware. We're going to be able to find it in your applications folder as a folder here. And then you can go ahead and double click IDE64. And then we're going to open up the application. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and disassemble a new file. And now we're going to find our God of War folder. So if you don't know where your God of War folder is, so I recommend what you do is you go to Crossover, you go to your Steam bottle, you hold down the Control key, and then click on Steam, and then click Open C Drive. Then what we're going to do is to go to our program files, go to Steam, scroll down, go to Steam apps, go to common, and then find your God of War installation folder. And what I normally recommend that you do is you go ahead and grab the God of War folder and then drag it to your favorite sidebar. And then when we close this and minimize this, we'll have it in the left sidebar here. So you can find the God of War EXE, GOW.EXE, and then press open. So here we're gonna be selecting the first line here, portable executable, and then press okay here. Just leave everything as the default option. It's asking us to load some additional DLLs. We're just going to press cancel until this closes. So the first thing we're gonna do is to go to the view section here, open subviews, and then go to strings. Then we're gonna hold the control key and I'm gonna click on any item here. And then we're gonna press quick filter. And then we're gonna search for that error message that came up earlier. I'm gonna type in the word Windows. So here we filtered for the word Windows. And so we found the error message that we were encountering earlier. So here we're gonna double click on this highlighted line. And then next what we're gonna do is to hold down the control key and then click on this line. Then we're gonna click list cross references to. Then we're gonna select the first line here and press okay. And this is the location that we found. We're gonna double click on the arrow that's pointing towards it. And then we're gonna find this line here, which says JNZ. So this JNZ stands for jump if not zero. And what we're gonna do is to change it to always jump. So here we're gonna select the line and then we're gonna to go to the edit button here and then patch program and then assemble. So we'll click this now. And then we're gonna select the JNZ line here. We're going to delete this and then change it to JMP. And then we'll press OK. And here we're gonna press cancel. Then we're gonna go back to our strings section and then we're gonna double click on this string again. And then we're going to control click on this line and then this cross references to. 
And now we're going to select the second reference and press OK. And now we're going to do a very similar thing. We're going to double click on the arrow that points towards this box. Then we're going to select the last line J and Z. We're going to go to Edit, Patch Program, Assemble. And then we're going to click on the JNZ, delete the NZ, and then change it to JMP, and then press OK. And cancel. Then we're going to go back to strings. So this has now removed the check for Windows 10. However, there is an additional check, which is for the error message, you need at least D3D feature level 11. So in this string filter that we have open already, we're going to type in the word D3D underscore, and we're going to find that error message that we found earlier. Then we'll double click on the string. Then we're going to control click on this line and then click list cross references to. And then we're going to find the one reference here and press OK. Then we're going to find this location ID and then control click on this. And then this cross references to. Then we're going to double click on the top line here. Then we're going to control click on this last line and then click text view. And then what we're going to do is to go to edit, patch program and assemble. And then we're going to delete this line entirely and then type in the word NOP and then press OK. And then basically what we're going to do is to enter the word NOP for the next five lines. Press OK, NOP, press OK, NOP, press OK. We basically want to move all of these yellow lines here. So NOP, press OK, and NOP, press OK. So once we're done with the yellow lines, we can press cancel here. And then we're going to go back to strings, double click on this line, control click here, and click this cross references to, and then press OK. So here we're going to press the location at the top. Then we're going to control click on the location and then click this cross references to and then press OK. Then we're going to click on edit and then patch program and assemble again. Then we're going to type in NOP, press OK. And then we're going to remove all of the rest of these gold lines. So NOP again, NOP, 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 then NOP, then cancel. So there should be six NOPs in that line. So now we've finished the editing of the EXE, we're going to go to the edit button here, patch program, and then click patched bytes. So here you can see the modifications that I've made. These are specific to the God of War EXE file, which is for 1.02, which is the latest version at the time of recording using the Steam application. So to complete this process, we're going to go to the IDA view A, then we're going to click on the edit button, then click patch program, and then click apply patches to input file. So what I'd highly recommend that you do is to create a backup of your file. So you can restore this if you've made a mistake by accident. Then we're going to press OK, and this is going to generate the new binary. And now that's complete. So now if we look at our God of War folder, you can see that GOW.exe has now been modified. Now what we're going to do is to open up Crossover and then open up Steam. Next we're going to find God of War. The main thing to make sure is that you control click on your Steam bottle and just make sure that DXVK backend for D3D11 is turned on and then we can go ahead and launch the game. So here we're running God of War at low settings at 1080p. And as you can see on my M1 Max chip with 32 gigabytes of RAM, the actual game actually runs pretty well. So there is the occasional stutter when new areas and new enemies are loading. But once the shaders have been compiled, it seems to run a lot smoother. So expect a little bit of stuttering when you're seeing new animations and effects for the first time, but after that, it seems to calm down. There does appear to be a little bit of audio dialogue mismatch. And throughout the game, you'll notice these tiny blue speckles on all of the textures. And this isn't really that noticeable from far away. However, there are some moments when it will cover a character. However, this might be expected from running a Windows game through a compatibility layer, especially a brand new game like this, which hasn't been optimized at all to run through Crossover or the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Anyway, I'd be really interested in seeing what kind of performance and optimizations might be available in the future. I've obviously tested this on my M1 Max chip. If anyone tests this on an M1 Pro or the original M1 Mac, then please leave a comment with your opinions on the performance. Also, I've tried to run this game through the Windows 11 ARM virtual machine running through Parallels, and unfortunately, this is not able to launch even with the patches that we've made. It'd be very interesting to see if Parallels is able to fix these minor graphical bugs and whether the stuttering is any better or worse. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see longer gameplay of God of War, then please check out the Apple Gaming Wiki YouTube channel, which contains a longer gameplay clip. I've got footage of hundreds of other games running on the M1 Mac. Big thanks to NAS for discovering and then providing the instructions for how to modify this EXE file so that we could run it through Crossover. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.